Hey everybody, welcome to the Bottom Dollar Outdoors podcast. I'm your host Brad. Uh, kind of got something new going on this time around. We're uh, trying out some new equipment. Got the camera up here this time. We're going to record this podcast. Got some new uh, software and we'll really try to make something really a little bit more enjoyable for you guys. But so welcome. I'm glad everybody's here. I'm glad you guys are listening. Hope you're enjoying this. Uh, Like I said, we got some new features going on with this whole week. This week's topic, we'll talk a little bit about my fishing trip from last week. And our topic this week is going to be on uh, snapping turtles. And, you know, what you can do with them, catch them, eat them, other things you can do with them. But uh, as far as everything going on here with the new system and how things are going to go, we have the... This video element here of the podcast itself, which is as it's running right now, there's, um, as for everybody listening, what's going to be on here is that won't be in here during the actual audio podcast that you'll hear on whatever platform you listen to over the radio or your speakers or your headphones. It won't be the exact same what you're going to get on YouTube. So, the way this is going to go, on the YouTube side of it, you're going to get this raw video here, and it's going to have a couple videos in it. Um, there's um, the video, there's a couple companion videos that are going to go along with this podcast that are, you know, uh, really pertain to it. One of them is going to be about uh, turtle baskets, and the other one's going to be about making set hooks. Excuse me. I didn't really get any video yet of catching any turtles because I haven't caught any yet. So that'll be another video. That'll be a specifically a YouTube video of uh, catching, cooking, and uh, catching, cleaning, and cooking uh, some turtles. So we're going to get right into it, man. I mean, so. You won't get to see those videos or hear those videos on the audio version, but you will get to see them on YouTube. And then both of those videos will also be standalone videos on YouTube also. And you'll also be able to find them on the website, www.bottomdollaroutdoors.com. So, well, last week, we um, I didn't release a podcast last week. Like I said, I was. Sorry, I didn't quite get into everything that I should have done um, right there in the weekend. And all of a sudden on Sunday, I was like, well, you know what? I can don't have to work this week. I got time. I'm going to go fishing. So I called up my dad and uh, we went down to Santee Cooper to do a little bit of fishing. Ooh, hang on. Sorry about the background noise. It was, there's cars going up and down the road. So sorry about that. If you we will try to make a little bit of adjustment here so you don't hear them quite as much. So we went down to Santee Cooper, and uh, I got down there Monday afternoon, probably around 6 o'clock. Had some things I had to do around here at the house as far as uh, like taking care of animals, some chores I need to take care of, get the grass finished, cutting it. And then, um, so I finally, I got on the road about 3 o'clock. It's about three, three and a half hours down there from here, and uh, I live up in Greenville County. South Carolina, and it's about Santee Cooper, like I said, about three and a half hours drive. So we get down there, we go, we catch a little bit of bait before dark, and we fish, we fish, I think, well into about one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. I only caught one fish. Uh, one of the other guys that we was fishing with, uh, my dad's friend, our family friend, Tim, he he caught a good many, um, had a few misses out there drifting with planer boards out there in the middle of, the, of Lake uh, Moultrie. Had a really good time. It was really, really a good good night of fishing. Come back, uh, get up the next morning. Everybody decides to sleep in a little bit, relax. So we go out. Um, that day we went out and we done a little bit of uh, anchor fishing after we went and had breakfast at Canal Lakes uh, next door. Then we, we decided we went we done a little anchor fishing, um, kind of what we call the stink bait bite. Tried out some new baits that we're looking at. and. 
we caught a couple fish. We had a lot of bites, tons of bites, but we know that they were, you know, smaller fish is what we, what we pretty much gathered that they would be. I got to keep an eye out over here because this thing stops recording after 30 minutes. So, but we will have to, uh, we would, we caught a couple fish. I only caught one that, that trip. Um, so we went out. <clears throat> I went back to the uh went back to the cabin for a little while. Dad and Tim, they had to go to um back to the store, go get a few things. I was gonna take the boat down the canal there and go catch some bait. I get down there, the wind is whooping. And Dad had told me we had some issues with the trolling motor. He said that it didn't work. So I didn't even deploy the trolling motor to kind of hold me still there in the canal. So didn't use it well. I went to go move, and the battery was dead. The battery was completely dead. I tried um, running the jumper cables over from the trolling motor batteries down to the starting motor or the starting battery system. I tried everything he told me that what to do. Nothing. They were all too low. So finally, luckily, I was so lucky that the wind was blowing back up the canal from Moultrie towards Hills Landed. So what I did, and this was, you know, I didn't have a paddle. I don't know why in the world we don't have a paddle on this boat, but I was just so lucky that the wind was blowing that way pretty stiff. I just kind of laid the, took the bimini top and laid it forward and used it as a sail and just used the motor as a rudder and steered my way back to Hills Landing. Got back up to the landing. Um, we got on the front of the boat. Picked the uh, bimini top back up, got up on the front of the boat, and actually used the anchor and just kept throwing it. As the wind was blowing, it was throwing it back closer and closer to the dock till I got myself there. About wore myself out. It was hot. It was probably 95 degrees outside in the sun. I, I almost just passed out on the boat. It was awful. But I got it with the boat hit perfect, exactly where we had it parked up against the bank when I left. So... Got it back there. Turns out, luckily, it was a loose wire. Spent about an hour looking for the wire. Finally found it in behind the battery. Tight, or Put some um, dielectric grease on it. Cleaned up all the connections on it, the battery, everything. Put it all back together. Put it on the charger for 30 minutes. Fire dried up, and they, it ran fine for the rest of the weekend. The rest of the couple of days. So that night, we were going to go back out. We had went and caught a bunch of perch for our bait. We were decided to go back out that night. Well, we got in there, man. We were all tired. It was hot. We'd been working on the boat. We decided to kind of call it a night and go early in the morning because I had to go home the next day. Well, lo and behold, I was, I don't know why, I could not sleep for anything. Just couldn't sleep. And we were going to get up at four in the morning. I mean, we went to bed around nine thirty ten. I was still laying in there looking up at the ceiling whenever dad come in at four o'clock in the morning. And I said, man, it's like, I ain't gonna be able to do it. I've got to drive home, get my son tonight. And I was like, I'm just not gonna be able to go. So needless to say, I didn't get to go the last day. And of course, whenever I left, they slaughtered the fish. I mean, they absolutely slaughtered them, filled up a whole cooler full of fish. And then that night they went back and they laid into them again. So just my luck it's how it usually runs i have a rough week of fishing don't catch a whole lot of fish as soon as i leave everybody does good with it i don't know if i'm just bad luck on the boat or how that works out but that's what happened as i know i'm this is my first time doing this so i'm trying to look at the camera but i know that i bounce around a lot i'm sorry but um as far as the fishing trip goes, it had been the first time that I had been catfishing since Labor Day last year. First time I've been fishing with my dad. I hadn't got to see him that much. And man, that it meant a lot to me. I finally, I've been wanting to go fishing with him so bad just to get back down there. But life and work and money and all that kind of stuff, I just didn't get a chance to go back until this past week. But it was really nice. I finally, I missed fishing with my dad and then got to go spend some time with him. And um, as far as and coming on this week, um, we have our outhouse story of the week, man. Uh, this guy, mm, man, I don't even know. Let's take a look here. 
Let me see if I can pull it back up. I lost it somewhere. There we go. So hold on for this in just a second. I'm going to take a pause with the audio here. And we'll be back in just a second. Man, we're back, and uh, it's time we're gonna get into our the weekly, you know, foolery of what's the outhouse. And this week, I've got a article here about some some genius down in Louisiana. Man, uh, let's see, this happened on June twenty eighth of this year. It says that uh, this is coming from. Let me see if I can find the. Okay, Fox News. It's posted on June 28th. Uh, courtesy reporter Timmy Lane on Twitter. So, apparently he's a Twitter reporter. Okay. He's got a picture of... Oh, you can, if anybody's ever been to Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's, you know they have these huge aquariums in the back where they put these huge fish on display. And um, all you can see is a really grainy photo of... Some water, and all you see is two legs down in the water. That's all you see. <laughs> I will share this story in the article on the on the website, but it says a Louisiana man seen in a vi- Louisiana man seen in a viral video swimming inside an aquarium at Bass Pro Shops has been arrested, according to reports. Kevin Wise, twenty six of Slidell, Louisiana, was charged with a simple criminal damage to property, just a misdemeanor. The Brasser City Police Department said, and here it goes on, it says, the suspect went in the tank in Brasser City as part of a TikTok stunt, according to KSLA-TV of Shreveport. Uh, This is a quote coming from Wise. It says, quote, I said that if I got 2,000 likes, I would jump in the tank. (laughs) Well, according to the you know the station here, it says quote goes on to say, I got way more than that, and I didn't want to be called a liar. End quote. The video posted by Treasure McGraw allegedly showed Wise swimming in the store's fish tank, climbing out, and then fleeing the store. Shreve, uh, this comes from the Shreveport K T A L T V. And then it goes on to say here that Wise was arrested after subsequently. Returning to the store for some reason, why you would go back to the scene of the crime? I have no clue. I don't know what this guy was thinking. Get your damn TikTok video, get out. Why go back and get yourself caught? I mean, they're, they're probably sitting there writing a damn police report, and guy walks back in, and there he's soaking wet, and they bust his ass. It says the store determined that it would incur costs for emptying and cleaning the thirteen thousand gallon tank after the alleged stunt prompting the filing of a complaint with the police. So, you know, apparently this guy must have been nasty. I mean, they're going to have to drain the whole tank and refill it with new water for whatever reason. No idea. I mean, most of the fish that are in these tanks are not aquarium fish. I know a lot of them are fish that are caught in the wild. Some of them are state records. Some of them are world record fish. Uh, so they're not, it's not like these fish ain't never been in a lake. And what's the one thing in a lake? People. People are out there swimming, boats in the water. I mean, this guy jumping into the tank, swimming around, unless he was just the nastiest son of a gun ever and just got in there. I don't know. But they said that they drained it out, cleaned it, and filled it back up with water. So they incurred some costs in that, which led to Wise being arrested. Damn. I, I'm... You know, I'm in that face, MySpace, Facebook, YouTube age. I don't know anything about TikTok. I don't even have it on my phone or as a part of my social media. But man, there's a lot of people get doing a lot of dumb shit because of TikTok. But, you know, whatever makes you famous, I reckon. But that's the outhouse story this week, man. This, what an idiot. <laughs> 
But like I said, I guess he got his followers and he's happy and he, well, at least we know he might be an idiot, but we know he's not a liar. But this week, uh, our main topic this week, we're going to be talking about turtles in general. We're going to be talking about snapping turtles. We're going to be talking about um, even saw shell turtles, turtles that you can eat. So we're going to move on to our topic here. We'll be back in just a second. So we're back, and we're going to talk about snapping turtles today. Man, uh, this is one of my favorite things to do. I grew up do, uh, catching these turtles with my grandpa, and he would always make turtle stew. We'd do fried turtle, and uh, if I even heard of people doing turtle sausage. I haven't ever had it, but if this is good as fried turtle, turtle stew, it's going to be delicious. Hey guys, uh, we'll talk a little bit about these turtles first. I'm going to show you real quick what a common snapper looks like for everyone listening on the on their phone. Um, you're not going to be able to see this picture, but I'll try to give a good description of it and the difference between a common snapping turtle and an alligator snapping turtle as best I can on here. If you want to see these pictures, you can come over and watch this video or I'll actually have the pictures in the in the uh, description for the podcast on the website for you to watch. So, I mean, this is right here. I'm going to show you right here. This is what's called a common snapping turtle. Um, this is what we have here in South Carolina, and, man, their range spreads almost completely all over the country. I know it said that they even have them all the way up into Ontario. Um, and so this right here, as you can see here, um, I know... You can't see my mouse on the screen here, but he's a fairly large turtle, kind of round, got some points around the ends of his shell towards his rear. But his top of his shell is fairly smooth. It doesn't have a lot of ridges and points and things like that on it. And, you know, I mean, these turtles get big. You know, they can get up in the, you know, tw I think they said they can get up to about 20 inches across. But of the two species... The common snapper is the smaller of the two. So you have a little bit of a difference there. Let me see if I still have this pulled up here on the turtles. I do not have that piece of paperwork. Oops. Oh, well. I was going to give you a little bit more in-depth information there. But as you can see here in the picture, kind of how his shell looks and everything there. And, the, of course, the one thing I did is I covered up his face. Um, but you'll be able to see it here in just a second. Like I said, I'm still working with this OBS thing. It's a new piece of software. I kind of didn't uh, impose to make myself small enough for you to see the face of the turtle. But if anybody's ever seen a snapping turtle, you know it has kind of a real sharp beak with a pointed mouth. And I'll, you'll be able to see that on the alligator snapping turtle picture here in just a second. And it's that part is fairly much the same. But yeah, this right here, this is the or the common snapping turtle. All right, so like that, that's that's the old common snapper there. Now that's the only one we have I know here in the southeast. I don't know what the exact range of the alligator snapper is, but we don't have those here in South Carolina according to our Department of Natural Resources. I've never seen one. I'm sure somebody's gonna say that they caught one. Just like everybody says they caught Bigfoot at one point in time, and they've all seen a Black Panther. So we'll have to take their word for it if you want to on that one. Um, this one here, this is one of the, the wildest looking animals I've ever seen as far as turtles or anything goes. But this right here, this is... This right here, this is the alligator snapping turtle. This is the larger of the two breeds of snapping turtle that we have in the United States here. And you can definitely see the difference between the two. As you see here, he's got a shell that's point has uh, round points all the way around it and huge ridge spikes all the way down its shell. Even He's even got spikes kind of on his head, which you don't have on the common snapper. 
Um, they both kind of have the same features. Um, his the beak on the alligator snapper is a little bit more pronounced, is sharper looking, but they look very similar f- between the two. And like I said, this one here is the larger two. Man, these things can get enormous. Um, I don't even know what the max weight would be on one of these things. I've never seen one in person. So if you guys, if you're from somewhere that has them, put it in the comments or, you know, wherever you want to put it and let me know about if you've seen these things, man. I know they're enormous. Man, I mean, that's just a, it is, it's just a cool looking animal. 100%. I would really, I really, one of these days I'm going to find one. I'm going to catch it. But, uh, you know, you have a lot of, of reasons why you would want to catch these things. One, they're delicious. I mean, you can eat them. Some states don't even have regulations for them. I know in South Carolina last night while I was doing some research, I did find that they are coming up with um, some laws as far as regulating how many turtles and amphibians you can keep. And the reason they're doing that is that way it kind of keeps animal traffickers from coming and stealing a resource from the state here, which is good, but they need to keep in mind that people do still catch these things and eat them. And that it is a resource and it is wildlife. And in South Carolina, I know wildlife belongs to the citizens, not the state. And it is a resource that a lot of people still like to go get. And they need to make sure to protect that resource and the rights of the people here in the state. But they are, as far as, you know, why I get rid of them, there's really, they don't, the only nuisance problems I've ever heard of these turtles is some people do believe that they wipe out fish populations in ponds, but man, as little as these guys eat, it's just like any other reptile. They eat once. They may not have to eat again for a while. I mean, it's just like alligators, uh, you know, lizards, things like that. If they can eat snakes, once they get a good meal, they can go days or weeks without eating again. So um, the only time I've ever heard of there really being an issue as far as them being like a nuisance animal is when they you have I know the one time that somebody actually called me because you know, I explained before in one of the other podcasts I used to do some uh, wildlife damage control. Uh, there was a dairy farmer who had a pond, and the cows would walk out into this dairy pond. It was kind of shallow. And they would walk out there and out there just drink water to cool off. Well, these turtles would actually bite the teats because they'd be, or the cows, the teats would be leaking some milk. And the turtle would bite the teat of the cow, tear it up, cut it up, and, or amputate, basically completely amputate it because, I mean, the jaw strength on these things is amazing. It'll, de- it'll take a chunk out of soft meat, it'll break fingers. And I've heard of it actually taking fingers off. I don't know if it would. But soft tissue, it'll take a chunk out in a heartbeat. So on the soft teeth of a cow, it would it just rips it right off, and then they can't use that to milk the cow. So if that happens, it kind of hurts the production of, for the cow. That was the only that's really the only time I've heard of it being an actual issue as far as your uh, as far as them being a nuisance animal. You know, I know a lot of people are scared of them. You know, don't want to step on one, but they're, they usually, they, you get around them, they get out of the way. Even if you're in a boat and you're splashing around in the water, and like they usually get out of the way. I have heard stories of people get a toe bit off by one though. So don't go, uh, if you feel something under the water, don't go messing around with it too much. But they are beneficial. Uh, I know they can kind of, you wouldn't think of a snapper turtle being a beneficial animal, but, uh, they do help clean up the lake. So, all your dead fish that finally sink to the bottom, dead birds, ducks, things like that. They uh, they will help clean that stuff up and get rid of some of the decaying stuff. And, you know, that's kind of what they're there for. I mean, they make a, that's how they make their life. They, they will eat f- fresh fish. They do have a, um, I can't remember what the technical term of it is, like a proboscis that I think that's the term for it for on their tongue. They have a little piece of their tongue that'll sit there and flicker. They'll sit there at the bottom with their mouth open. And a little proboscis will sit there and flicker up and down. Draw in fish, crawfish, things like that, trying to see what it is. And clump, 
got them. So that is, they do eat a few fish, but like I said, they're just like any other reptile. They have a very slow metabolism, and the colder it is, the less they eat. So they're not really a nuisance as far as eating up on your fi- all your fish, unless you just have an abundance of them for some stupid reason that they just exploded in your pond. And that's when you call somebody to come and get them, somebody like me. But, uh, you know, there's there are a couple other turtles I know can be eaten. Uh, definitely your soft shell turtles are, they're another one that can be eaten. They're, uh, like I said, they're a soft shell turtle. I didn't include a picture of one I should have, but man, these things get huge. They get, you know, you know, I would say they get 20, 24 inches in diameter, if not bigger, because I catch them when I'm catfishing. And they have a very similar mouth structure to a snapping turtle, but their head is almost arrowhead shaped and kind of wrinkly looking compared. And literally their, their shell is soft. Like you could, you can flex it and bend it. Um, they're usually a little lighter in color as far as their skin goes. They're usually kind of a whiter color. The top shell is still kind of green colored from what I remember the last one I seen, but it wasn't as dark green. And usually the underside of them is covered in mud. If you're in that kind of environment, as far as your lake bottom goes, but they they eat just as well. They have the same they have the same dietary um, needs, and they kind of eat all the same prey. So they taste very similar. But if you want to go and you know catch these animals, I always catch the saw shell turtles. I catch a lot of them while I'm actually out fishing. And um, you're going to need some different, if you want to go out and you want to catch these things, there's different ways you do it. You always you can catch them on hook and line when you're fishing. I know a lot of people catch snapping turtles while they're fishing. I haven't caught one yet, but I have caught the soft shell turtles. But there's other ways to do this. Um, I can sit here in a minute, I'm going to show you a couple ways that I like to do it. The most primitive way to do it is go down and catch them by hand. I know there's uh, the guy that used to call a turtle man on... Uh, He's come on Discovery Channel, I believe it was, and he would catch them by hand. Never done that, never tried, but, you know, picking these things up, and we'll get into this real quick, I I left this off the list, but whenever you're picking, if you have to pick one of these things up, if you catch one, you don't know how to pick it up, the alligator snapping turtle, you can actually, because apparently their neck is a lot shorter than the common snapping turtle, you can reach down and grab it by the um, the back, the front of the shell right behind his head. Whatever you do, don't get your face in front of his, or your uh, hand or face in front of his face, because he will bite your ass. But if you go slide your hand up his shell and go right underneath the behind his head, this is the alligator snapper, not the common. And then you can reach back and kind of pick up on the front of it and grab him by the back of the shell right above his tail, and you can move him. I've heard of people trying or doing this with the common snappers, but the common snapper turtle has a much longer neck. It's almost, he almost looks like a tortoise. He's got a really long neck. And from what I've heard, the only way you can pick them up is by the tail because that's the way I've always picked them up. It's always what I've been told. They said, if you reach down there and you try to grab that shell, he can flip that head back and bite you. Or if you mess up and get your arm a little bit sideways and not straight out, he'll reach around and he'll get you on the, on the side of the arm there. So make sure, uh, you know, you know what you're doing and there's videos, of, there, there are videos online of people picking these things up and handling them and showing you how. So make sure you get on YouTube and check those out before you go and handle one of these things. Because if you get bit, don't come, don't come bitching at me because you didn't listen and go do your research. I mean, there's, there's some things called uh, barrel traps. I've never seen one, never used one, but I know... From what I've seen of it, basically you take a 55-gallon barrel and you put it in a lake, you know, you drill holes in the bottom of it and you sink it down in a lake about three-quarters of the way up. In other words, you know, if you cut the barrel at three feet, you sink it in two feet of water, throw some bait in it, and like a rolling stick, kind of a similar to the bucket-style mousetrap, apparently. And then you put your bait in there, and then the turtle, and you make a ramp, the turtle go up the ramp. And then he'll fall down in the barrel. You can catch him that way. I've never personally seen that or heard of anybody trying it, but it is 
and something that was described on the website of how to catch them. But the way that I, I, I'd want to do it is I either use set hooks and turtle baskets. But uh, the turtle baskets uh, are just what they say. They look just, if you know what a fish basket looks like or a fish trap, you use something fairly similar to that. I'm sure if anybody, y'all, any of y'all have ever set fish baskets, you have caught turtles in those fish baskets. It happens. I mean, it's, it's basically the same thing, just bigger and maybe made a little bit more heavy duty. Um, I'm going to show you here in a minute. I got a video of one. I'm going gonna, gonna to go to that here in just a second. I'm going to show you. And then you also have set hooks, which is basically just a, a rope with a hook on it, some bait tied to a tree thrown out in the water and they'll come by and bite it get hung on the hook you just pull them up and you got them um as far as other equipment that you're gonna need uh one thing i know you're gonna need when you're out there is you if you're gonna be out in the water any setting these things you're gonna need some waders or something like that if the water's cold for some reason in summertime just wear some shorts walk out there set all your stuff up um you're gonna need a way to handle them as far as when you get ready to process them. I have a thing. It's an iron hook. It's about that long, maybe a little bit longer on the handle side. And it comes down. It's got a really sharp hook on the end. And what I'll do is whenever I get ready to uh, dispatch this animal, I'll put it in there and he'll bite down on it and I'll yank it and it'll come through the soft part of his chin. And uh, by the way, I can maneuver his head around to get to him where I can cut his head off to dispatch him. That's something you're gonna need, or a way to get his to get his head out of his shell, because he'll draw up and you won't be able to kill him. <clears throat> uh, See, so yeah, another thing you're gonna definitely need if you're gonna be doing this is you're gonna need your as far as your you know your basket stuff like that, you're gonna need bait. So as far as bait goes, you can use just about anything. Whether you want to put it in your baskets uh, envelope, which is the envelope which what you'll put your bait in. And put it into the basket, which you'll see in just a minute on the video. And as far as the set hooks go, we're going to show you that video here in just a second. Um, but basically all the set hook is, is a hook attached to a piece of string that's baited and that's tied to a tree. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit in the in the video, but whenever you use these things, you got to buy a lot of states, you have to have permits for them. There's a limit on how many you can use. And again, as far as the bait goes, you can use fish. You can use like bloody deer meat, you know, ro- I mean, I even know people that'll go and get roadkill and just hack it up and put it on a hook and throw it out there. They'll eat just about anything. I just showed the video real quick of how to do the set hooks. If you want to see that, you can dive right over to the uh, website or on YouTube and go back and watch this. There'll also be standalone videos on YouTube of that and the uh, turtle baskets coming up here shortly. Hopefully I'll have them up at the same time that this podcast launch. But so you go and you catch one of these things. What are you going to do with it? And, the number one thing you're going to do is you're going to cook them. You're going to eat it. I mean, what else? why else would you be doing it? And you, in the state of South Carolina, you're not supposed to take wildlife from one place and release it in another. And if you catch one of these guys on one of those set hooks, trust me, you're not going to want to try to get that hook out of his mouth because usually they swallow it for one. Usually they swallow it deep and that's how it hooks them. But, uh, yeah, you're not going to want to reach in there with a pair of pliers and try to take this thing out so what you're gonna do most people like me i'm gonna eat it and I, I they're delicious they're wonderful um they can have kind of a fishier taste to them and <clears throat> depending on what kind of water you get out of get them out of you know it could be if it's really clean water things like that that that's good sometimes the water that you get them out of can kind of affect the taste so what a lot of people do is like what they call prep them or cleaning them out. So what you'll need to do that is you'll bring the turtle home. You'll cut the, uh, if you caught them on a set hook, sometimes they don't live 
long enough to kind of do this with. But if uh, you catch them in the turtle baskets, you can bring them home. And if you have a big tank of water or a 55-gallon drum, something like that, and a good shady spot, you take and you'll fill it, you know, enough where the turtle can get his head up out of the water and breathe a little bit. And like I said, you'll put fill this thing with water where he can breathe and then set it in a shady spot and put him in there and feed him, you know, for a, a week or two. And you can feed him potatoes. They'll eat those. If you want to feed them meat, you can feed them meat. They'll eat it as they want. Uh, the whole thing about using meat is, like I said, they don't eat a lot. They don't gorge themselves. So if you put meat in there, you might want to make sure that it don't get rancid. And if it does, take it out. So then every few days, uh, change the water out because they're going to poop. That's the kind of point of cleaning them out. And the water's going to get really nasty. And it gets hot. It doesn't matter if, you know, it's in the shade. If the ambient temperature outside is 86 degrees, after a day or two, that water's going to be that temperature. And it's too hot for them. So make sure you uh, change that water out every, you know, every few days. Don't use, like, extremely cold water if you have, if you can help it. Put it in buckets or something like that and let it warm up for a couple of days. Um, one way that I've seen to do it, if you needed a lot of water, say if you got a, a big tank like I do, what I what I normally do with it is I'll take a, a, a couple buckets, fill them up, let them kind of warm up, but I'll take a tarp and put it in my wheelbarrow, fill it up with water and let it warm up for a couple hours. That way, you know, if that water's 80 degrees or 85 degrees in that tank where the turtle's at, you drain all that water out, his body temperature, because they're cold-blooded, is going to be that 85 to 90 degrees. Well, you take, you know, if you got well water, it's going to be cold. It's going to be in the 50s. Or, you know, city water, it's going to be in the 60s, 70s. You go dumping that cold water in there on him, you can put him into shock. You can kill him. Um, they're not used to that kind of rapid change in water temperature. So kind of let the water warm up a little bit before you change it out. But I would do this for about a week. We always fed them potatoes, cabbage, whatever. They'll eat it. I mean, they'll eat just about anything when they get hungry. So you do that for about a week and kind of cleans them out, as they say. Changes the meat the flavor a little bit. Gets a little less fishy. But it kind of gets some of the, you know, the weird funk out of them. Me, I'll eat them straight out of the lake. Sometimes I don't even care. But you no, know, the old timers always say clean them out. So if you depend on which one you want to do, do it. Um, as far as equipment goes, when you get ready to dispatch one of these guys, all right, you're going to need several things. The first thing you're going to need is a hatchet or an axe. That And that, that hook thing that I was talking about, it's just a... It's a long piece of iron. It's about this long or so. It's got a sharp hook on the end of it that you put in his mouth. Set it and pull his head out of his shell so you can dispatch him. Um, you can't really shoot these things to kill them in the head because they'll stay alive for days. Um, I'm telling you, what you're going to do is you're going to take his, go have a piece of rope with a loop on the end of it. And that's what you're going to use to hang him up. Go ahead and uh, what you're going to do, pull his head out of the shell with however means you got. Kind of, And what you can do, the best way to do it is kind of put, have a stump or a rock or something like that. And you put his shell on one side and kind of pull his head and neck out over the top of that stump or rock, whatever it is. And take your axe and or hatchet, cut his head off. Right then and there. Um... And like I said, and once you cut his head off, do not think that he is dead and that he cannot hurt you. Uh, if you take that hook out of his mouth or whatever you got and you get close to him, he will still bite you. He'll bite you for several hours after you cut his head off. He will bite down just as hard as what he could before you cut his head off. They have a very slow metabolism. They run on very little oxygen. I mean, their heartbeat is so slow, it's crazy. Their their actual heartbeat will beat for a couple hours 
after you cut it out. I mean, that's how, I mean, that's how hard these things can survive. I mean, they can, they hibernate and I'm telling you, it's an amazing, they're amazing creatures, but be very careful with them. And another thing, and so the next piece of equipment, you're going to want that hook. You're going to want a sharp axe and a stomp or a rock. Next piece of equipment you're going to want is a pair of pruning shears and a pair of pliers. And the reason for this, and you also got to have your rope. So you can do this one of two ways because that shell, he's going to be moving the shell with the feet with no head is still going to try to move around. It's going to be kicking and clawing. It's going to be doing, I mean, it's like the terminology of like a chicken with his head cut off. It's kind of the same thing. So at that point in time, what you want to do, the best thing to do is take it, that rope around his tail and put it around his tail and pull it good and tight and hang it from a tree. The main purpose of this is you're going, you need to bleed this turtle out, let all the blood out of the meat and let him hang. While you have him up there, what you need to do, because you're not going to be doing this, you don't want to do this while you're trying to clean him. So what you want to do is you want to take those prudent shears or whatever you have, those big, you take the pliers, grab him by the feet, and cut his claws off. Um, because that way, if he's still, because every now and then, while you're working with this turtle, once you put him up to uh, actually process him, there'll be random jerks of motion. Their claws are sharp and their legs are strong, and they'll cut you. If they hit you, they'll 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 cut you on your arms. So the best thing to do is just kind of cut those claws off and get them out of the way. That way, it's not a danger to lay down down the road. Some people don't do it. That's my advice: is to cut the claws off. You don't have to cut them high. If you come too high, you're kind of getting into your meat that you're going to get. All right. So I'm not going to really get into how to process one there's a lot of i don't have one to show you if i had one to show you i would tell you how to do it there's numerous videos on youtube that i suggest that you go and watch on how to clean a snapping turtle um i mean there's different ones but as far after you do that and you let them hang for you know 35 minutes to an hour somewhere in there you're gonna get ready to process them well the next piece of equipment that i'm going to suggest that you have is some really sharp knives as far as because what you have to do you have to separate the shell from the turtle uh, you have to separate it from the, the, the bottom shell here from this back shell so you're going to need some really sharp knives possibly like a really big uh, flathead screwdriver to kind of pry that apart but um i said you can look that up the how to do that part but the next um everybody kind of has their own way of doing that the way that I like to do it, you know, if you put this guy on a table, a flat table, and uh, you try to work with him, he's going to be, that ta- he's, the shell's rounded. So he's going to be moving around, up and down, side to side, spinning around. You don't want that. So what you do is you take a, if you're going to be working on a table that's already there, then what you need to do is you take a piece of wood and take it two nails, two long, like, I would say some, you know, decent framing nails and drive through that piece of wood. You want them about, you know, no further apart than four inches apart. And you want them coming up out of the wood and sticking straight up towards you. You want the head of the nail down, nail sticking up. What you're going to do is you're going to take that shell or that turtle and you're going to hold him upside down with his back shell down towards that wood and you basically you hold him in your hands and you pick him up. My microphone's in the way, but you're going to slam him down on those two nails. And that'll hold him and it'll go through his shell and it'll hold him steady. If you want to, and this is something I'm going to get into in a minute. If you want to save that shell, the back shell, for arts and crafts, things like that, things that you can do with it, which I suggest you do. Use every part of the turtle that you can um, then you don't want to do it this way. You want to do it the, the other way where you can, you know, you just spin him around and cut him. But if you don't care about the shell, you just want the meat and you're in a hurry, put him on that board, slam him on those two nails. What they'll do is they'll, you know, they'll penetrate up through the shell and that'll keep him from spinning around and around and moving on you. If you just use one nail, then it'll keep him from sliding around, but it won't keep him spinning. So in a way, one, 
I mean, it could be beneficial just to use one if you have a big table that you can't move around and you can just spin the turtle around on. If you have a small table you can walk around and work around, use two nails and that'll just hold them still for you. Like I said, I'm not going to get into actually how to clean them because I don't have one here and I'd have to show you instead of sitting here and explaining it to you. No, I really don't have it. So once you watch the video and you learn how to do it and you get this guy, you get him processed, cleaned, the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to brine it. Brine the meat overnight in some salt water, you know, a couple cups of salt to however much water you need and a little bit of sugar, brine him overnight before you get ready to cook him. Um, as far as cooking these guys, uh, you can either, you can take, you can put them in a soup, you can fry it, and you make, I mean, I know some people grind them up, make sausage, and people do all kinds of things with them. Um, I'm going to find some recipes, I'm going to post up here on the website with this, with this podcast, that way you guys can do that, but uh, man, it's delicious. You can either fry it like chicken, with just a regular breading that you would use on fried chicken, or you can cook it up and deep fry it like you would do fish with your uh, fish seasoning. So in either way, it's delicious. And turtle stew is amazing. So um, I will find some of those and I will post them on the website. What you're going to do with what's left of the turtle after you get all your meat and all that stuff, the entrails of the turtle, let's say, you know, you want to cook, you know, enough because there's, there's probably enough on one turtle for a family for one meal. But let's say you want to feed, like do a, uh, like a wildlife or a wild game supper and you want to have enough for a lot of people where well, you're going to have to get more turtles. Well, when you clean these turtles, the leftovers, the entrails and all that stuff. You can reuse, use it, uh, put it in a bowl, freeze it. When you go back to set your baskets or uh, put out your set hooks, if you got entrails, what you can do with your set hooks is get a um, some cheesecloth, put it in cheesecloth, wrap it up, put it on the hook, or use. Uh, I re- I don't know. I probably wouldn't use the uh, pantyhose method because the turtles gonna bite. It's not gonna feel quite right. I would definitely use the cheesecloth and kind of wrap the entrails up in some cheesecloth before you put it on your hook. Uh, or, if you're using the turtle baskets, like you've seen in the video, just throw your entrails in that uh, little envelope, fold it up, put it in there. You can reuse those for bait. Um, you can actually grind some of that up and use it for dog food, those types of things. Just make sure that you uh, take out uh, the bi- or the um, gallbladder, things like that. You know, the normal stuff that you would take out of a chicken or a fish, or a, I'm sorry, a chicken, you would take out of this turtle and dispose of it. And um, the stuff that's left over, like the skull, uh, you can actually use, uh, if you have ever done like a European mount using beetles, you can use those. You it's, it's, it's very hard to do, so you have to scrape. You have to boil that skull and scrape and scrape and scrape because it's tough. That, that skin and all on that head is tough. But you can boil it and scrape it all down. Uh, do not use bleach when you boil it because that the beak still has some color to it. So you don't want to use any bleach or anything like that. Make sure the beak is sticking up out of the water a little bit whenever you go to boil it. But you scrape all that off. You can use the beetles or you can use a pressure washer. It just takes a long time. But the beetles seem, as far as what I've researched, seem to be about the best option as far as cleaning up the skull. And they look really cool. Uh, on display, uh, very very cool little thing to have. And the shells, man, they're all over the place at my grandpa's house. You can get them, uh, hang them up. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to take and uh, tie, drill a hole in them, tie a string to them, and paint them, and run around like as a shield. And I know some people paint scenes on them and hang them up, but it's a really cool thing if you have the the skull and the shell. Basically, clean that shell up really good with some uh, soap and water, and get it nice and shine or nice and clean, and then go back over it with some um, some kind of lacquer 
or um, a, a sealant or something like that to preserve that color. And you can hang it up. It looks really good as a display, kind of a taxidermy piece in your house. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's a many, many other uses for it that you can use. Uh, the skin is so tough. I'm sure there's a lot of things you could do with it if you still wanted to keep it. Uh, but the, the skulls and the shells and the claws, I know I've heard of people making necklaces out of claws, but I don't know how many people will still be interested in doing that. But, man, they're they're cool animals, man. They really are. They're not only really interesting in how they live and what they do, they're a great resource to have wherever you're from. But besides that, they're really, really delicious. So they're all around good animal to have. Uh, I know some states, like here, they've been unregulated, but because of animal trafficking and, you know, black market kind of stuff, then, you know, they're kind of putting some laws on stuff to kind of protect our resources. But um, guys, I'm uh, looking forward next week to get you another show out. I'm not sure what the topic is going to be for, ne- what the topic's going to be next week for this show. Still kind of working for that figure out what we're gonna do see i'm gonna i want to get somebody on to come by co-host come sit down talk with me or even uh do a phone interview with somebody i don't even know what the topic's gonna be yet so look forward to that uh reach out to me if you have any stories you want to tell i'm still working on that uh the show that i want to do for you guys of all your stories and different things so reach out to me with those uh, contact me you can get me as far as my email goes, is bottomdollaroutdoors at gmail.com. You can go to the website there, and it has a place where you can contact me. It has all the links to all the social media pages. Uh, Facebook.com slash bottomdollaroutdoors. Twitter. Um, handle on there is catfishbrad864. The Twitter page is bottomdollaroutdoors. It's all listed there on our website, which is bottomdollaroutdoors.com. And make sure you go to, if you're listening to this on Apple or you're listening to it somewhere, go and leave a review. Um, Please, if you give me what you honestly think, I prefer you give me five stars, but let me know what you really do. We really do think about what you're getting from me because it helps me either. It helps my channel grow or show grow. Not only that, but it also gives me the feedback of what you guys want to hear and it helps me make the show better for you. But, you know, reach out to me, man. I really hope you guys enjoyed the show. Look for this, the videos for this on YouTube. If you just want to watch just the videos, if you're listening online, you want to go back and just see the videos. You can go back and watch those. They'll be freestanding. Or if you got some time and you want to watch me talk to a camera and fidget around and not know what I'm doing as far as how to work all this damn equipment, I don't have a... I don't have somebody over here sitting beside me that I can yell at and tell them what to do. So I'm trying to run computer, audio, camera, all that stuff all at once by myself. I'm sure this looks like a shit show. <laughs> I'm sure it does. But guys, thank you all for listening. I hope to catch you again next week. God bless America. And God bless every one of y'all. Have a good night. <laughs>